In this video, I'm gonna give you some maintenance hacks and tips that will keep your bike working in perfect order and hopefully save you some money. But before I do, if you appreciate our content and would like to support the channel, then please subscribe and click the bell icon down here. First up, clean your bike. Now cleaning the whole bike and doing a thorough clean is always best, but I appreciate that you don't always have time. So if time is short, then the key areas to focus on are the drivetrain and the braking surfaces. Now on the drivetrain, you can accumulate this kind of thick black paste, which grinds away at your components if it's left on and causes them to wear out quicker, costing you money. And on braking surfaces, any dirt or grime that's left on there will also cause accelerated wear. Now in terms of how to clean your bike and your drivetrain and your braking surfaces, we've got lots of videos on that, so we'll link to those in the description below. But in terms of what you clean it with, bike specific products are great, there's lots of different ones on the market, but if you want to save some money, then Petroleum Spirit or Petrol Spirit is one of the most cost effective degreasers that you can buy. It's also highly effective. A couple of downsides to it being that it's flammable and it's not too good for the environment. There are also environmentally friendly degreasers available as well. Now an excellent hack I got from Doddy on GMBN is to use a shower cap, not on your head, but on your disc brake rotors. See, when you're using degreaser on your drivetrain, you have to avoid it going on the disc brakes because if it gets on the rotors, it contaminates them and it can make them squeal and not brake properly. The solution, get the shower cap and place it over the rotors, like this one, which I definitely didn't steal from a Belgian hotel room last week. Anyhow, shower caps are readily available in lots of places, such as hotel rooms and also high street chemists or drugstores if you're uh, from America. Anyhow, good hack. Buy your own tools. This can save you a fortune over time by not having to rely on bike shops and use mechanics unnecessarily. Learning to perform basic maintenance is a great skill to acquire. And here on GCN, we've got loads of videos that can teach you how to perform most jobs. And if we don't have the video you need, well, comment with it down below and we'll endeavor to make it. While a whole park tool workshop grotto is the wildest fantasies of a bike nerd like me, it isn't realistic to expect people to buy all of these tools, especially in one go. So the tools that I would say are essential and should be prioritized are as follows. Allen keys, a good set, or well, hex keys or hex wrenches if you're from America. Next, I'd recommend a chain checker tool. I'll go into that later as to why. Then I'd say a chain whip and a sprocket tool so that you can remove cassettes and center lock disc brake rotors. And I'd also say Torx keys, but this one is optional. Have a look on your bike. If it has Torx bolts, as some do, then it's worth getting a set of these. Now with these tools, you'll be able to perform the most common maintenance jobs. Next, we're gonna talk about frame wear and how to avoid it. Now, this can happen when you attach accessories to your bike, such as saddle bags or bar bags or frame bags, but it can also happen in locations where cables rub against the frame, often at the front of the bike, and it happens when you steer. It's particularly bad in wet and dirty conditions as well, because the wet and the dirt can get in between the two surfaces that are rubbing and actually accelerate the wear. Now in some cases, it'll rub through the paint, but in really bad cases, it'll go through the paint and then into the frame material itself and rub away at that. My favorite solution to stop this is to apply some tape to the potential rub locations to give them some protection, but not any old tape. I'd advise using some 3M Heli Tape, which is clear, which means that, well, it doesn't spoil the look of your bike and it's all but invisible 
as well. It's really cool. You can buy it in sheets like this and then cut it into the required size. It's also available in rolls and well, it's relatively inexpensive. And also, if you were doing something like cross or gravel and you were worried about stone chips on your down tube, then you could cut a big section and invisibly apply it under there. It's something that mountain bikers often do as well. Check your components to see if they're worn. Cassettes are a case in point here. They're a relatively expensive component on the bike and they cost way more than the chain. You'll typically get two to three chains for every one cassette, but if your chain wears out and you don't change it, then it will accelerate the wear on the cassette, meaning that you have to replace both of them, which is unnecessary. It's kind of like, the worn metal becomes mated on both surfaces, a bit like the pieces of a jigsaw fitting together. So when you put a new chain on, it'll just skip on the old cassette. The most basic chain checker tools look like this and they just slot on the chain like that. But I would recommend getting one of the slightly more expensive ones like this. They really are worth it. So to check your chain, it's dead easy. You simply pop it on like that in between the chain and then you move the little slider in and it'll tell you how much wear there is. Now, on a 10 speed chain, you're looking to replace it when you see 0.75 of wear, but on an 11 speed or 12 speed chain, this is an 11 speed, you're looking for 0.5 wear, which is what I have right now. <laughs> so I actually need to replace my chain. I have been doing quite a bit of riding recently. Anyhow, good job I checked. The final thing I'll say on this is, by all means, upgrade your components, but be sensible about it and wait for things to wear out. I mean, that new cassette that's 10 grams lighter than your current one, look, it can wait until your present cassette is completely worn out and the teeth are hanging off it. It's a good idea before or after a ride to just check your tires for any little flints or bits of glass that have got stuck in them and then get some tweezers or something fine and just carefully pry them out because over time they can work their way in deeper and cause you a puncture when you don't expect it. Also look at the wear on your tires too. So tires like these Continentals actually have wear holes that can tell you how far your tires worn. And one of the things with road bikes is that the rear tires always wear out quicker than the front tires. So an excellent hack if you want to save some money is to rotate your tires. After you've done a certain amount of time and your back one's worn out more, simply swap your back for your front one and that way you'll get more mileage out of them before you have to replace them both. Recycling and upcycling things is awesome for the environment, but it also saves you money. Cash back. Cha -ching. Inner tubes are a great example. People seem to have forgotten that you can repair them these days, so patch them up unless they're really badly torn and it'll save you loads of money and it'll really help the environment, but they're useful for loads of other stuff as well. A classic use for inner tubes is to simply cut a section and then you can use it as a chainstay guard. This is popular with mountain bikers, but it's also useful for cyclocross or gravel riding, anywhere where you're gonna be worried about chain slap potentially damaging your frame. So to do it, simply get a piece of inner tube like this, I've cut the valve off, and then you can just wrap it around your chain stay like this. A section of inner tube can also be used for insulation on a CO2 inflator. Inner tubes double as great bungee cords as well, which are useful for all manner of things, such as fastening and securing your bike when you're transporting it in a car or the back of a van, or simply holding other things up like wheels against the side of a workshop. And another cool use for inner tubes is to simply take a small section like this, cut it up with some scissors, and then you can use it as a shim. I find this particularly useful on the handlebars where you are gonna clamp other accessories such as lights or GPS units as the rubber stops that accessory from shaking and any vibration and also just protects the clamping surface. And finally, a bonus hack. Simply take an old water bottle or 
bidon if you're French or if you're not French but just pretentious and chop the top of it off. So this is a water bottle that's kind of got a bit disgusting and you don't want to drink out of it anymore. You simply chop the top off with some scissors, place it in your bottle cage and then whenever you're doing some maintenance on your bike or cleaning your bike, pop it in there and it's a really useful place to just put tools and brushes or whatever you're using within easy reach in a place that they're not gonna kind of fall down and scratch your paintwork. Right, I hope you found these hacks useful or perhaps you're just an obsessive compulsive hoarder and now have even more legitimate reasons not to throw things away. Either way, if you're either of those, please give the video a thumbs up and to see some cleaning videos, then we're gonna include links to those after this and also in the description down below. And if you'd like to get your hands on a GCN cape, if you wear it backwards or apron mode as it is right now, Capron, then you can, they're in the GCN shop.